Greetings from high above Grand Park overlooking scenic Westfield. It's time for some hints to help you to complete one of your AP practice questions. So this is a practice question that involves combining normally distributed random variables. So many people very successfully on our quiz in this unit were able to deal with a random variable that is discrete. It was defined by listing outcomes and probabilities in a table. We've recently dealt with binomial random variables, so this is a good question to review how to deal with normally distributed random variables. If you haven't taken the time to read the setup of the question and both parts A and B, please pause the video and do so now. Okay, so essentially what's going on, we have a train that's leaving Bull Snake and approaching Copperhead. We have a train that's leaving Diamondback and approaching Copperhead, and we really don't want him to crash here at Copperhead. So that train from Diamondback is going to go and switch on to this track right here. But to do so, there's a possibility that the train from Bull Snake is going to have to stop here and wait in order for the train at Diamondback to go across the switch onto the other track and pass by. So, conveniently, the travel times are distributed normally. So X represents the travel time for the train from Bull Snake. So you should be familiar with this notation. X is distributed normally with a mean of 170 minutes and a standard deviation of 20 minutes. So up here, you can think about this train. X is the travel time and it is approaching Copperhead. And then the train from Diamondback, its travel time is Y. It is also normally distributed with a mean of 200 minutes and a standard deviation of 10 minutes. So here's what's happening to Y. Here we go. So the train from Bull Snake, its travel time is X. The train from Diamondback, its travel time is Y. First thing we're interested in doing is finding the distribution of Y minus X. So it's important that these two travel times are independent. In order to deal with this new distribution, then, I need to think of its shape and its center and its spread. Good news, though, because y and x are both normal, and y minus x is a linear combination of two normally distributed random variables, the difference of y and x is also going to be distributed normally. So we just need to figure out the mean and the standard deviation. So we'll call the mean mu, so I'm interested in mu y minus x. So let's not work too hard because I know the mean for y and I know the mean for x, so we can simply subtract them, mu y minus mu x. So that shouldn't be too hard. I assume that you can do that. So in order to come up with the standard deviation, though, we need to start with the variance. So I'm interested in looking at the variance of y minus x. Now, because the travel times are independent, I can add these two variances, the variance for y and the variance for x. So something to think about, even though this is a random variable defined using subtraction, subtraction is really adding an opposite. So in truth, we're still combining all of the variability of y and x together, so we still add the variances. So we're going to take the variance of y, and to that we're going to add the variance of x, so be careful though, in the question you're not given variances, you're given standard deviations. This is the standard deviation of y and the standard deviation of x. So we need to take those standard deviations and we need to square them in order to come up with variances. So again, using standard calculator notation, I'm using the caret for the squaring operation. This will give me my combined variance, and again I'm able to add them this way because they are independent random variables. Now, ultimately, we don't want the variance. Ultimately, we want to describe the standard deviation. So don't forget, once you've done this, you have to take the square root of this sum in order to get the standard deviation. It's perfectly acceptable to round to the tenths or hundredths place. Keep a decimal or two. So part B then. Over the long run, what proportion of the days will the train from Bull Snake have to wait at Copperhead for the train from Diamondback to arrive? So here, X, our travel times from Bull Snake. The train gets to Copperhead. When is it going to have to wait on the train from Diamondback to come by and pass across? So when does X have to stop and wait? Well, that will happen when X gets there first. So you have to decide what does getting there first mean? So we have to think about comparing X and Y. 
So, when, how will X and Y compare if the train from Bull Snake has to stop here and wait? That will mean that X got there first. So, the travel time for X was less than the travel time for Y. So, we want to find the probability of this outcome. Now, this should look pretty similar to a question that we've done before. If you recall, we did a question involving golf scores where we compared Brian and Dave's golf scores. Brian compared to Dave. And we wanted to find the likelihood that Brian wins. Well, Brian won when his golf score B was less than D. This should look familiar. Well, in order to do this question, we looked at a different random variable. We actually took D and subtracted it from both sides of this inequality. So we really were looking at the difference of B minus D, when is that less than zero? And that's the probability that we calculated. Well, we can do something very similar here. So understand, we're looking at when is X less than Y? So first of all, I'd like to get a zero on one side of this inequality, but look above. Look at what you've already done. A very typical AP question involves taking what you've done in the previous portion and recycling it. Well, up here, I already know what the distribution of y minus x looks like. I can turn this down here into a y minus x by subtracting x from both sides of the inequality. So I would have zero is less than y minus x. Of course, that's the same thing as saying y minus x is greater than zero. So I can find the probability of this outcome. I'd like to find the probability of the event y minus x is greater than zero. And I've already got everything that I need in order to do that because I know the shape and the center and the spread of the distribution of y minus x using the previous question. I know that y minus x is normally distributed. I've calculated a mean. And by combining variances, I was able to calculate a standard deviation. So in order to do this question down here in part b, you can take y minus x is greater than zero, and you can think about this instead in terms of z-scores. So you look, can look at zero, take away the mean, divide by the standard deviation, come up with your z-score, and then you need to think about how you want to use that z-score in terms of boundaries in the normal CDF command in order to come up with the probability or the proportion of days that the train from Bullsnake will have to wait. So that's the logic of this question. I feel pretty confident that uh, having gone through this and talked about some of the most important parts that you can complete these calculations, being able to combine and work with normally distributed random variables is an important part of AP statistics. Hope this has been helpful.